Hey guys, and welcome back to Daymare 1998. When we last left off, I said I was going to go back and meet you where we uh, originally left off, technically by the elevator. However, remember when we was coming back to the item room and I shot some dude and he kind of half fell into the wall? Yeah, he popped out. Popped out of the wall. <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't get it on camera, which... Uh, yeah, that's the lesson to me. Don't cut things out in this game because it's so beautifully buggy. Um, that's my bad. Anyway, let's go. Uh, right. Uh, also, I did find on the table by the T-junction, just up from the room that was uh, bolted shut, there was an energy drink there. So, uh, I was kind of half tempted to just leave it there because we've got to go back there later anyway, but eh, you never know. Anywho, let's get this elevator key working for us, shall we? I think this might be the last video that I do today, or maybe I'll do one more. Uh, back to work now, so it's going to be the last video I record for a while, which uh, depresses me greatly because I want to just record. Because as jank and as just kind of fucked as this game is, there's something about it that I just enjoy. It is the gameplay loop is just fun. Go down, sir. There you go. Excellent. Now, the aiming mechanic is actually quite good as well. Can't really complain at that. Alright, sir. I'll be with you in a second. Okay, that that was weird. Everybody saw that. The bullet kind of like went past him and then back into him. I think I okay. That's fine. We're just, we're just keep pretending we didn't see that. Okay. Now hopefully we can find some goodies around here. Because we like goodies as another override hacking cable, which we probably could have just left behind. Because if you've got one, you've, you've kind of got one. You don't really need multiple. Okay. Ah, that's actually reasonably useful. Oh, no, it's not. No. Because you can't mix that with anything, I don't think. You cannot. No, no. That's fine. That's fine. Oh! There's our zombie skeleton friend. He really does get about. Oh, lovely. Certainly have those. Oh, hollow points. Not bad. We'll take those. Apart from that, it seems all quiet on the old western front. Alright. Alright there, love. You good? She's all right. She's not having the best time, bless her, but... You know, things could always be worse. At least she doesn't have to worry about all this nightmare shit that's going on. I kind of remember where a lot of the enemies are, to be honest. Ah, there we go. This is the 667, I do believe. Yep. And that gives us a mental fluid, which, eh, I mean, I guess we'll take it. 
sit down and shut up, sir. Okay, so. Hmm. Yeah, we've got the mental fluid there. It's a shame we don't have anything to mix it with. We're already down. Oof. We're already kind of limited on our inventory space. Now, you can leave things. Uh, you can just drop items anywhere, kind of like Resident Evil Zero, which is fine, but then you've got to remember where they were. And again, although it's nice, and I would say absolutely uh, Im essential, just due to the fact that item boxes are so, so rare, um, not my favourite mechanic. Also, I don't know how we're listening to audio tapes with this device, but whatever. Again, above my pay grade. Alright. So, there's actually a puzzle in that room, but we'll fiddle with that later. We don't need to worry about that just now. And there is the secret door. Right. I think there's an awful lot of much down here. But there is a room with a button. I need a key to open this. So if you're wondering if we have to come all the way back down here again later, you'd be right. Okay. So what have we got? Doc, I'm here. It looks like an archive of some sort. Precisely, Mr. Walker. Keep the chatter to a minimum, though. This time you won't have to shred corpses. Just park your tush in that chair by the PC and initiate the archive self-destruction sequence. The process should be rather simplistic. That is all. Uh, it doesn't seem too difficult, I guess. Okay. Keen Sight Herald. Contagious disease strikes the maternity ward. Oh dear. According to several eyewitness report oh yeah. According to several eyewitness reports, it would seem that all patients admitted to the maternity ward of Sacred Heart Hospital in Keensight have been struck by a mysterious affliction. The hospitalized women in various stages of pregnancy have simultaneously experienced symptoms such as nausea, vomiting, abdominal cramps, and in severe cases, loss of consciousness and temporarily paralysis. Oh dear. As we wait for confirmation from the hospital officials and City Hall, we urge friends and relatives of the people hospitalised in this department to contact us with any news on the status of their loved ones and the babies in their wombs. The Vermilion Post, May 27th, uh, 2052. Sacred Heart Hospital case details from City Hall. After three days of intense rumours regarding a mysterious disease in the maternity ward of Sacred Heart Hospital, key authorities have at last shed light on the matter at hand. Late yesterday evening, an urgent press conference was held in City Hall where Marshal uh, Donovan, the spokesman for the mayor, confirmed that an epidemic had in fact occurred, although it was immediately rectified thanks to the diligent efforts of the medical staff. In addition, it was not possible to divulge further details due to an ongoing and sensitive investigation in progress. Importantly, however, it has been confirmed that the afflicted female patients are free of danger due to a special treatment developed in haste by specialists at Hexacore Biogenetics. According to these reports, this treatment will not affect the mothers and unborn children in any negative way. Keensight Daily News, June 20th, 1952. 
Exclusive new details on contagion at Sacred Heart Hospital. Our confidential sources have offered new information that, if confirmed, could shed a rather disturbing light on the mysterious contagious disease which struck the maternity ward of Sacred Heart Hospital in recent weeks. According to our sources, pregnant women are unwitting unwitting victims of a biological nerve agent infection. This particular agent is used in combat and treated with uh, atrophine, the same remedy used on patients in the maternity ward. We therefore ask ourselves at this point, how is this even possible and if the parties involved are as powerful as one might think? The Red Crest Chronicle, June 27th, 1952. Sacred Heart Case. Keensight Police Department breaks silence with disturbing revelations. This morning, the Keensight Police Department broke its silence on the case involving Sacred Heart Hospital, revealing an unbelievable and incredible twist. According to Police Chief Lambert, who emphasised that lack of information by police was important to their investigation, the outbreak was, in fact, malicious in nature. The suspect is J. Uh, Preges, a nurse of the maternity ward who is believed to have suffered a mental breakdown and intentionally infected patients uh, ward with hazardous material stored in the laboratory for safekeeping. The rest is speculative as, perhaps in a desperate act of guilt, the suspected attempted to flee the city with authorities in pursuit and lost control of her vehicle atop Silent Cliff Road, falling to the edge of Bear River and crashing into the coast 40 metres below. According to the police, the suspect is presumed dead, even though a body is not expected to be recovered due to strong, strong currents in its surroundings area. With no way of verifying the true motives of this heinous she-devil, with patients in the maternity ward returning to their normal lives, the case is now closed. And with it, the most disturbing and terrible pages in the history of our peaceful little town. Or is it? Was that woman just a scapegoat for something? Maybe. Maybe. Now, this one is a little bit of a penis. So, we need to do this in the right order. So we want to switch number two, then we want to switch number three, then we want to switch number one, uh, then number three again, and number three again, and switch row number four. There we go. Right. That's that. Now make sure there's nothing else left in here. Because as soon as we leave... Yep, it blows. And you can't go back in there now. But uh, that's fine. Right, so let's see if the good doctor is happy about that now. Hello. Hello. Oh, he was a hallucination. Typical. <sighs> Pretty sure. We've done everything here, haven't we? Every now and again, it ah, F. What's F? Alright, F appears to do very little. There's nothing in here we can grab either. Alright, maybe... Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. Right, let's get out of here anyway. And get back to the good doctor. Uh, 
Oh. What is that? Well, dear viewer, that's, uh, that's a melted man. And, uh, don't worry. They're not exactly much of a threat. Fairly durable. And they will try and spit at us, but, again, not much of a threat. There we go. Now, there's an achievement for walking up and meleeing one of those. Uh, although, don't do that. Because if you walk up and melee it, it's an instant kill. Now, randomly enough, it does melt this car bonnet, uh, bonnet? Car boot open. But, I had this problem last time. These bullets here, these handgun bullets, are incredibly difficult to pick up. I don't know why. Oh, had it there. Alright, if I... There we go. Yeah, they're way harder to pick up than they should be. Don't know why. Bad programming, I guess. Okay, so... What happened to that magazine I had? We had a magazine, didn't we? Did we drop the magazine? <laughs> Possibly. I guess it, it doesn't really matter that much. It's fine. Okay. Back to the doctor. Did we really drop that magazine? We must have... Um, yeah, it must be back in the item box. Because we haven't done the active reload thing. So, yeah. Not sure. So that's a melted man. We're going to find uh, a few of those throughout the game. They're not really anything to worry about. They do have like a nasty melee attack, but again, not really going to ever come across... Well, I say come across them. Uh, we're not really going to want to let them get that close to us, to be honest. Alright, so... Back to the doctor. see what he's got for us this time. Hey, Doc. I'm out here. Now let me in. Oh my, Mr. Walker. Welcome back. You have indeed proven yourself reliable. I must admit, I couldn't have done it better myself. Listen, man. I almost died covering up the shit you people have got hidden in here. The shit you're a part of, Doc. I thought your job was to save lives, not destroy them. Do not presume to lecture me, Mr. Walker. I will not be scolded by the likes of you at a time like this. It boils down to business, money, and power. All of which the company has more of than you can begin to fathom. But I'm still useful to them. They'll come for me eventually. They'll come for me because I too am reliable. And that is exactly why you and I have one last task to complete. Oh, fuck you, man. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice. Well, huh, I can't get fooled again. I'm done. Just shut it and listen. An acquaintance of mine, Dr. Kimball, went missing and out of radio contact while carrying out an important job. He did, however, re-establish the signal just a few minutes ago. From what little I gathered, we've only got a few minutes to save his life. And who better than reliable you to rush to his aid, hmm? Complete this one final task for me, and I will gladly throw open this door and invite you to inside. Let me reassure you, Mr. Walker, that I am a man of my word. Oh, fucking hell. All right. But that's it. If you don't open the door next time, I'm gonna find a way in there. And you ain't gonna like it. That won't be necessary, Mr. Walker. Dr. Kimball seems to have locked himself in the east wing of the facility. But I'm not sure how long he'll be safe there. So please, rescue him as quickly as possible. Good luck. God damn it. 
Ah, hospital guard. Seems like someone shot him. He's holding a key. Well, let's go grab his key then. And uh, remember I said there was that locked room back up the way we came? Let's go visit that one, shall we? Seems like probably the best thing to do right about now. Hopefully uh, there's nothing too nasty waiting for us outside. Or, you know, whatever. Oh, I need something a little bit more gnarly than that. Right, let's grab the old... Uh, the old reliable. Yeah, that's going to irk me. Like, what the hell did we do, honestly, with our magazine? To be fair, I don't mind not having it because we've got plenty of shotgun shells and it does just waste an inventory slot, in all fairness. So, I mean, maybe on the hardest difficulty, magazines might be like more of an important thing, but on this difficulty, yeah, it's not hugely important. So there are our bolt cutters. Certainly going to have those. And hollow point ammo. Certainly going to have some. How much hollow point ammo do we now have? A lot. Really need to drop an override cable as well because... Well, we're going back that way now anyway, so... I guess we can jiggle our junk around and try and find that magazine. This uh, stamina pen can go in the pot as well because, it's again, it's kind of pointless. Right. Ah. So. Oh, boy. This is another long one. Guard's diary. I can't leave my eyes closed. It's, it's all I think about at night. And I should not even have been there. After my shift ended in the West Wing. I should have gone back to the guardhouse as per regulations, but no, I just had to play another round with Scott to kill the boredom. It's been more than a week since I went to room number six after midnight, where cheerful old white-haired SOB was waiting for me with his set of polished poker chips. Come to think of it, I have no idea why he's a patient in this hospital. I some, uh, it somehow involves a fishing trip in the mountains, even though he appears to be in good health at least he was in good health at least he was in good health lately he's got some kind of weird skin rash that's probably the result of his medication what I do know for sure is how good his poker game is I really thought I could hold my own but he whooped my ass almost every night and he probably would have done so yesterday too if not for this whole mess after my shift ended in the garden I entered the room as usual unplugged the cameras and started our game, illuminated only by the faint glow of my flashlight. I knew it would be risky if anybody found out that I'd left my post for over an hour, but I did so anyway, and plugged the camera back in before leaving. But this time was different, only a few minutes had gone by before I heard the approaching echo of footsteps in the corridor. I immediately flicked off the light and hid in the bathroom while Scott scurried back to bed. After a few seconds of silence, in my haste, I left the door slightly ajar and caught a glimpse of two dark figures entering the room. Without warning, one of them grabbed Scott, whilst the other injected him with something. They held his mouth shut to muffle his cries as his body became seized by convulsions. Then he stopped just as quickly. I didn't know what to do next because my very presence in that room was a violation of policy. Then the conversation began. Oh God, I recognised their voices, but why on earth would two medical doctors do such a thing? And in the middle of the night? What did they mean by a failed experiment being discarded? All I know is that Scott had stopped breathing by the time they left, along with any hope of being able to sleep again. I need to make a decision now or never. Put my job at risk or turn a blind eye just like everybody else in town does. No, I don't know if I can live with that. Maybe I should talk to Atheon. Atheon is the only doctor I trust here. Yeah. Atheon, not quite so trustworthy, it would seem. Anywho, we now have the bolt cutters. Let's 
so let's get out of here. As if it would be that easy. Honestly. Well, at least that uses up some of the cartridges that we've had. Was that three? Oh, baby, a triple. A triple decap attack. Very nice. Yeah, I kind of like these secret logs, actually. Um, I wasn't 100% sure if they were going to be worth reading, but yes. I'm enjoying the extra bit of background. I think a lot of them actually are more interesting than the ones that we uh, got stuck with in the actual game, which is really curious. Because it does give a lot more information in what's going on. Not that it's particularly deep or necessarily interesting, but, you know, a bit of flavour text. I guess we can't talk to him again. Now, let's go back. Are we really on half an hour already? My god. I just noticed we've got a gun on, on our back on a little holster there. Never noticed that before. Right, we're clear. We are clear, son. Clear. Clear. You never know when the enemy's going to spawn these bastards. Right. So that room must have been this one here. Because there's loads of cards and whatnot in here. And that's obviously the room the security guard was hiding in. I'm guessing that's why there's all these stacks of cards and whatnot. Okay, yeah, nice little bit of flavor text. A little bit of world building. Don't mind that. Okay. Don't know why there's like a whole container of bricks here. Right. Let's get that done. And I suppose we're going to go jiggle our junk around. Uh, a little bit early, but I think we'll call this an episode. And I might just cheekily squeeze one more in. Because I just don't want to stop playing this game. No, so where's the magazine gone? Did we... I accidentally dropped the magazine, didn't I? I'm going to have to watch this video back to see where I dropped it to. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. Hmm... Ah, uh, where would I have dropped the magazine to? Um, oh, that's really quite frustrating. I mean, it's not super important, I suppose. Like, the magazines, although they're nice to have, they're not... Uh, fool of a took. Anyway, we're going to leave it there, guys. So, thank you very much for watching. And as always, till next time.